So before we get into this video, I have a question for you guys. I wanted to see what you think about what we're going to be talking about in this video, and that has to do with customizing or upgrading your pistols. When it comes to your EDC or CCW pistol, do you upgrade them at all, or do you leave them stock? Sound off in the comment section. I would love to hear what you have to say, because we're going to be talking about the upgrades that I've done with my Glock 19 coming up. Hey guys, thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. As always, you didn't have to click on this video, but you did, and that is awesome. So we're gonna be talking about the upgrades that I've done with my Glock 19. This is a Glock 19 Gen 4. It's been my carry pistol for, man, uh, three plus years. And last year, I went ahead and did some upgrades and customization. We're gonna get into everything that I've done with it here in just a second but I did want to touch base with you guys real quick about what's going on with the channel. So if you don't know, this past May, my channel was completely demonetized and um, initially I really didn't think it was that big of a deal. In the last three months, I have noticed a continuous and steady decline in all of my analytics, whether it's watch time, uh, new subscribers, um, views, all of that jazz, I've seen a noticeable decline. So a couple days ago, uh, talking with a buddy of mine, KS Gun Guy, uh, we both made the decision that we're going to reapply for monetization. And I can tell you right off the bat, it has nothing to do with about money and it's all about working the algorithm. All right, so I've noticed a steady decline and I'm going to see what happens if I do get accepted for monetization, if that changes anything in my uh, algorithms. So and analytics and all that jazz. So more to come, I'll find out uh, what happens here in about a month, but I'm not changing anything. I'm gonna continue to put out videos for you guys. If you're interested in supporting the channel, there are plenty of links down in the description below, uh, whether it be my Amazon top 10 or checking things out on fitandfire.com or Patreon or whatever the case may be. There's a whole bunch of different ways you can support the channel if you guys want to. So, all right, let's get into the upgrades that I've done. Real quick, I'm just going to give you a once over on everything that I've done, changed or added, and then we'll go into a bit of a deep dive on exactly what I've learned in the last year since these things have been completed. Now, first and foremost, we have a stippling job and undercut on the trigger guard done by Williams Gunworks out of Wichita, Kansas. Um, that's where I'm from, my extended family lives down there, so I was able to get linked up with um, Clint from Williams Gunworks, and he went ahead and did the stippling job, undercut on the trigger guard, and a RMR cut as well. Uh, we basically talked it over, figured out what I wanted, handed my credit card over, and said, let's go with it. From there, as you can see, I do have a Trigicon RMR Type 2. Originally, I had the 6.5 MOA dot, but now I have the 3.25 dots. And then I have a Faxon Firearms um, threaded barrel on here for the Glock 19. Again, if you guys didn't catch, this is a Gen 4, uh, just so you know. Uh, and then finally, I've had this Olight PL Mini on here since, since I've had the Olight. So the moment that I got it, threw it on, it's been on since then. All right. So there you have all the different things that I've done with it. I have not done anything with the trigger. I will say that I previously had a Zev trigger kit in this, but I swapped it back out for all the stock stuff because I like the stock stuff better and weird. It's usually backwards to say that, but I just like it that way. So what have I learned in the last year since I've made all of these changes? And I can tell you, um, the biggest thing that I've learned is I've become more confident with this pistol. Now, are all of these upgrades necessary? No, at the end of the day, no, they're not. But what I have found is that I get a better grip on the pistol with the stippling job and removing the, um, the finger grooves from the front of the Gen 4. The undercut here allows me to transfer that recoil from my wrist into my arm better by getting a higher grip on my pistol. The RMR allows me to be more accurate and 
ironically allows me to see more of the target with this red dot and then the barrel has increased my accuracy as well. Now, I'm gonna be 100% honest with you guys. When I initially did all of these upgrades, it was just because everyone else was doing it. And to be honest with you, I'm not that type of person, typically. I, d I don't do something unless I understand why I'm doing it. But in this case, I was doing it basically to keep up with the Joneses, right? All these other you know, YouTube guys were out there doing upgrades and customizations to their pistols, and I'm like, man, I, sh I should do that too. That looks cool. And I fell into the trap. But what I can tell you since then, I've learned so much on why some of these uh, things can really help you. Like I said, when it comes to the stippling job and the undercut on the trigger guard, uh, that has really helped with my grip on the pistol. Removing the finger grooves was the biggest and most noticeable change when it came to my grip, and I really like that. Um, and then, like I've already said, the undercut allows me to get a higher grip as well. The RMR, that was a big change for me because while I'm used to red dots like I have right here on my AR pistol, I've got a Romeo 5, I'm really used to red dots on rifles. Red dots on pistols are not something I'm really used to, so it took me a long time to really fish around and figure out where that dot is. Now, one of the ways that I overcame that was I went through some training with the red dot. And last September, I was able to link up with Ken from Provictus Group and take his defensive pistol course and learned so much. One of the great things that Ken was able to do was teach me how to change my draw stroke to get that red dot closer to my eye as I was marrying up my hands and pushing the pistol forward. I was able to get the red dot to where I could see it right about here instead of here. Made some changes, Ken, thank you, really appreciate that, and um, that was a big learning um, lesson for me as well. Still, it took me about three months to get over that hump and really become confident and accurate with the red dot. Now, as it stands now, I'm able to nail targets at like 70 yards, uh, not every time, but I'm far more proficient and confident at shooting longer distances with the red dot. And then the Faxon Firearms Barrel, uh, I threw it on here. It's gold because why not, right? <laughs> but originally I thought I was going to be doing a lot more suppressor work, uh, you know, being linked up with suppressor uh, silencer shop, rather. And unfortunately that hasn't come to be as of yet. We're still working on that and trying to get some uh, suppressors to me to test out for pistols. But... What I can tell you is that I did notice an increase in my accuracy just because of the barrel. Obviously it's longer uh, since it is threaded, so that accuracy is going to be a little bit better than your stock uh, Glock barrel because you're adding about 3 8 to a half inch on the length, overall length of the barrel. That's going to give you uh, more twist rates on the bullet coming out, which means that it's going to stabilize longer. It's going to be a little bit more accurate. And then uh, it's going to build more pressure as it's going through the barrel as well. Makes it for a bit of a hotter round coming out. So what I've noticed is when I have the Glock 19 barrel in here, my rounds are impacting on a target at a certain area. I put the Faxon in and it ends up being a little bit higher because those rounds are a little bit hotter coming out of the barrel. So something to take into consideration. Uh, like I said, there was a noticeable, um, albeit marginal, but noticeable increase in accuracy. So those are some of the things that I've done. That's some of the things that I've learned. Um, I'd like to hear what you guys have to say about tricking out, customizing, upgrading your pistols, uh, especially when it comes to your CCW EDC style pistol. So that about covers it this time. Thank you guys so much. Sound off in the comment section down below and what you guys think. As always, I do appreciate it, especially my Patreon crew. You guys rock. Thank you so very much. As always, here comes a high five. Freedom through strength. Catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.